Yo, what is up guys? Grim here. So today's video is going to be the start of a little bit of a mini-series, which I've got kind of cooked up for you guys. And what we're going to be talking about is the Atlas. Uh, more specifically, I want to teach you guys how to make your own strategies with the Atlas. Kind of like baking up your own brew and uh, making sure that you can uh, kind of come up with strats on your own and maybe take advantage of some stuff in the market going on. Maybe farm up some stuff uh, which is very high value. Maybe you guys can teach me something then. That would be extremely cool. So what we're going to start off with today is how to choose a map on the Atlas and go infinite with it. So I'm going to start off with the bare bones and teach you guys everything you need to go all the way up to um, kind of going infinite and like the kind of high level stuff. But you really need to have a core understanding of all the stuff that's going on at its base. So let's start off and get straight into the action. So to start off with, I'm going to choose a map on the Atlas here. We're going to go with this tier 7 here, Bizarre. It's nice and simple. So to begin with, we want to learn how maps drop. So in PoE, when you're doing a map, let's say a tier 7 map here, um, a map like this can drop any tier below it. So if we're doing a tier 7 map, tier 6s can drop, 5s can drop, 4s can drop, all those can drop from the tier 7 map we're doing. So it's all the way down the tier list, which is really, really important to note. So like when we're doing this one here, if we have cage complete, pen complete, and lookout complete, all these can drop in the tier 7 map we're doing. Similarly, if we're doing Maze of the Minotaur, um, we can drop Carcass, we can drop Shrine, any of the tiers below it are fair game on its drop table, as well as the tier it is itself. So if we're doing tier 16s, 16s can drop from that 16. So that's really, really cool to know and really, really important. However, there is some exceptions to this rule. So when we're doing our bizarre map over here, if we run into a pack of magic monsters, which are surrounded by a blue aura in the game, those specific monsters have a chance to upgrade the map tier by one. So those can drop tier eight maps as opposed to seven, which kind of break that rule. So it's normally seven and below, but magic monsters can drop tier eight and below. Um, similarly, uh, rare monsters can also drop eight and below, which are the ones surrounded by a golden kind of yellow aura. There is one more exception to this rule, and that is unique monsters. So unique monsters, mainly the boss on the map, which is like the map boss, can drop two map tiers higher. So if I'm doing my bizarre map here, I can drop a tier 9 map, as well as a tier 8 map from that, and anything below. So now we understand how map tiers work on what kind of maps, and what can drop and what can't, and from what. So that's a super, super essential thing to understand when you're coming into building up your strategy. This is like the foundation and the core understanding behind everything. And now that you guys know that, we can start getting into some of the more interesting stuff. So next rule up, only maps that are completed on the Atlas can drop. So let's say we're doing our bizarre map again, and we are looking at tier four maps. Okay, so let's highlight tier four maps on the Atlas here. So tier four, let's have a look. Okay, so we've got Strand here, this isn't completed. We've got Canyon, not completed. Lighthouse, not completed. Essentially all the tier four maps except one are not completed, and that is Volcano. So using this newfound knowledge we have that only maps that are completed on the Atlas can drop, whenever a tier four map would drop, guess what map it's gonna be? It's gonna be Volcano, because that is the only tier four that is eligible to drop when we drop a tier four map. Because again, we can't drop any of these ones which aren't completed. So now we know, wow, if we don't have certain maps completed, we can force the Atlas into dropping only one type of map. So now you're telling me I have to like go through the Atlas and make sure that I don't complete this map and that map and that map. That's gonna result in you buying a ton of maps, right? There has to be a better way to make sure that I don't have these maps completed. So, the way we do this is with the Apprentice or Journeyman or Master Cartographer's Seals. So the way you can get these seals is by coming up to a vendor and vendoring three of a coloured sexton type. So we've got red, yellow and white um, here, as well as one scouring orb. And what this is going to give you is an Apprentice, Journeyman's or Master's Seal, as we said earlier. So what this seal does is it basically allows you to redo a map on your atlas and kind of take one back so let's get an apprentice one here so what this means now is that when i come to the atlas remember let's say i only wanted um let's do tier three maps for example let's say i want to take off a tier three map um so if we don't want a map to drop anymore we can just take it off the atlas so let's look at the tier three maps tier three maps so let's say we're doing our bizarre map and we're looking at our tier three map pool so what have we got here? We've got burial chambers, we've got excavation, cells, 
uh, Peninsula, and all this kind of stuff. So when a map would drop, which is tier 3, it can be any of these maps. But we now have the power to take one of those maps that would drop out of the map pool. So let's say we don't want Peninsula anymore. We can use this new item we just learned how to craft um, to take that out of the map pool, and it'll never, ever drop again. So let's say Peninsula off the Atlas. Ooh, now it's gone. It's kind of gray, which means it's no longer completed. Um, just to go over how a map becomes completed, all that you need to do to complete a map is kill the map boss in the map. So if you don't want to like complete a map, what you can actually do is just kill all the monsters in the map and then leave the map boss and don't kill it and it won't complete the map. That's really cool knowledge to have. So now when we're doing a, our tier 7 map and a tier 3 map wood drop, it will never be Peninsula, which is really, really cool. So now you guys understand how to take maps off and how powerful it is to be able to manipulate what is going to be dropping in your map pool. So next up, there's a bit of a rule in the Atlas which kind of breaks this, which is kind of crazy. Um, but I'm going to teach you about it right now so you guys can really understand how the Atlas works. Alrighty then. So let's use our tier 7 map here again, and uh, actually let's pick a new one. Let's go with Arachnid Nest here. So the new rule that we're going to introduce here is that when we are taking maps off and stuff, and we normally think, okay, that's no longer on the Atlas, it can no longer drop, this is going to be an exception to that rule. So using, let's use actually Infested Valley. Using our new map here, Infested Valley, let's look at the maps which are adjacent to it, which we can learn are made by these connecting lines. So if you see a line connecting to the map you want to run, which is Infested Valley in this situation, you need to pay special close attention to those maps. So what have we got here? We've got some lines here, we've got some connectors, we've got Infested Valleys connected to Coral Runes, Infested Valley is connected to Arachnid Tomb, and then Plateau. So we can see here it's connected to three maps, which is really, really cool. So what these connectors mean is that when I'm running Infested Valley, there will always be a chance to drop Plateau, Coral Ruins, and Arachnid Nest because they're connected to it. They're natural neighbors of it. So this means that kind of ruins our old rule. So if we're running um, Infested Valley and we, for example, wanted to manipulate the Tier 7 map pool, we'll never be able to get rid of Coral Ruins or Arachnid Nest because they're neighbors of them. They'll always have a chance to drop because they're connected. So now we need to learn that rule and we need to find a way around it. So how can we get around this damn rule? So we can force the Atlas into dropping only what we want it to drop. We're going to like push it around and bully it a bit. Alright, so there is actually a way to get around this and that is a kind of tricky way to get around it. And that is with the Shaper's Orb. So remember, a map can only drop two tiers higher. At its absolute maximum, you can never get higher than two tiers higher. So what we can actually do is use a Shaper's Orb, um, which we're going to grab one over here off Zana. What do we need here? We need a tier 9 one. We need um, a, a Shaper's Orb. And what this actually allows you to do is increase the, um, the level of any map on the Atlas by 5. Which is very, very cool. Um, so what we want to do here is, let's say... We want to change our tier 9 maps and we want to take off all the tier 9 maps uh, make it so that only one tier 9 map can drop or no tier 9 maps can drop which we'll get into in a second um, what we can do here we need to get rid of plateau it's in our way we don't want that map on there because remember it's a natural neighbor you can always have a chance to drop so the way around this is by increasing its level by five so remember we can only drop one and two tiers higher now this is tier 14 so tier 14 has no chance to drop from a tier 8 map meaning that even though it's a natural neighbor it's no longer eligible to drop no matter what so we've kind of eliminated one of its natural neighbors we can kind of imagine there's not even a line here anymore and we've kind of broken off this path so now we can do some really really cool stuff with that information <clears throat> so Let's say we're doing, we want to run infinite infested valleys here. So the first step to doing this is using our knowledge we learned before. So the only map we want to drop as tier 8 is infested valley. So the first thing we need to do is take off all the other tier 8s. So to do an infested valley strategy, I would need um, quite a few of those seals um, myself. Because we need to take off all the other tier 8s. So what have we got here? Courtyard 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 10 maps, minus 1 because I counted a shape on just there. So you can do the math here, 9 times 3, uh, what do I need? 27 yellow sextants and 9 scouring orbs to set up my infested valley strategy because I'll need to take off all of these yellow maps. Okay, so what does that give us? We've taken off all the maps now, what are we going to have achieved here? So when we're running our infested valleys now, um, we can have a guarantee that the only tier 8 map that's going to be dropping is infested valley. 
So that's really, really cool now. So whenever tier 8 would drop, um, that means we get a map straight back from what we just ran. And that is really, really amazing. So that's really, really cool. Um, but remember, we can still drop a plus one map um, from the Atlas because of the uh, blue monsters and the rare monsters. So we now need to fix that problem because you might not think you'll get that many, but it does actually quite happen a lot and we'll be able to get even more tier eight maps if we can knock out the possibility of getting a tier nine map as well of those magic and rare monsters. So what we can do now is manipulate the tier nine drops um, to make sure we only get tier eight drops. So let's take a look at the tier 9 maps on the islands. What have we got here? We've got a few here. So what we do first to make sure we get no tier 9 drops, essentially blocking tier 9 drops, is remove all the tier 9s off the atlas. Uh, you don't have to remove unique maps, those don't have a chance to drop. So just all of these tier 9s we see here, one, two, all of these, I'm not going to count them, but you need to take all of those off. Which is basically essentially going to give you a situation where you have no tier 9s, because remember, Plateau can no longer drop because we blocked it by making it such a high level that it has no chance to. So now we have no tier 9s on the map. And that's going to be really cool because when the Atlas realizes, Oh, this guy has no tier 9s. What am I going to do? Drop no map? No, what it does is it realizes there's no tier 9s and it drops one tier lower than that, giving you even more tier 8 maps. So now, whenever a tier 9 would drop, you'll get an infested valley. Whenever a tier 8 would drop, you'll get an infested valley. So you've got lots of infested valleys now. And now with this understanding, you can actually go infinite on pretty much any yellow map you want, which is pretty damn cool. I've done it on quite a few maps now. I've always gone infinite after a few maps, and you guys are going to notice a lot of returns. And we probably learned earlier that, wait, 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 hold on a second. We can drop all of the tiers below it. So if I'm doing a tier eight, I can do, I can drop eight, um, seven, six, five, but it's really cool in the Atlas system. And what goes on is that when you're doing a map, you have a higher chance to drop a map, which is um, kind of a tier appropriate. So if I'm doing a tier eight map, I'm probably going to get a seven, a five, um, an, an eight or a nine. You kind of get the point here, and that's what it's going to be able to allow you to do. So we're going to be getting a lot of infested valleys if we go infinite on it, and we're going to get less low tier maps. You'll still get them, you'll notice them, but you'll get a lot of yellow maps, um, which will be infested valley. And what's even cooler about this strategy is when we use the Atlas bonus. So the Atlas bonus is basically a chance to upgrade a map that would drop on the um, in your maps to one tier higher. So let's say I have 10% increased Atlas bonus and I drop a tier 7 map. That tier 7 map has a 10% chance to turn into a tier 8 map if it is eligible. So when we're doing our Infested Valley, because we forced all 9 and 8s to turn into Infested Valleys, when that tier 7 map drops, um, you've got a 10% chance to upgrade it into, guess what, an Infested Valley. That's right. So that's really, really cool. And if you see here, I've got a 131%. Are you kidding me? That's crazy, right? So now we've got all tier 9 maps that are Infested Valley, all tier 8 maps that are Infested Valley. And now, because I've got 100% Atlas bonus, 100% of the time, tier 7s are going to turn into tier 8, so all tier 7 possible map drops will turn into Infested Valley as well. And now, because I've got 131, all tier 6 maps have a 31% chance to turn into Infested Valley as well. That's insane, right? So remember, because we're doing maps that are tier 8, and we have a chance to get like really close to that tier, we're getting an insane amount of Infested Valleys. It's going to be so much that like 67% of all map drops are going to be Infested Valley now, because of the way we've manipulated the Atlas, which is pretty damn cool. So that's kind of how you're going to force the Atlas into dropping a tiered map for you. I'm going to quickly touch on red maps, um, not these red maps, because we can't do this trick. Remember, we can't use the Shape Absorb in here. It's too difficult. Um, you, you'd have to use the Elder Orb, and look at all these neighbors, like look at this one, Palace, one, two, three, four, five neighbors, five natural neighbors, and that's why you'll see most people shy away from running these maps. You can't force the Atlas into dropping any of these maps for you specifically because of all those natural neighbors. You can't make sure that you can pinpoint one, and that's the problem with that. However, I know a lot of people want to know how to sustain red maps, and um, that's what I'm going to cover next as fast as I possibly can. So let's get into it. Let's say I wanted to stain a shaped atoll, which is going to be over here. Actually, that is really hard to see, so we're not going to do that one. Let's pick a different tier 11. Mm, shaped tropical island. 
Let's do shop Tropical Island. Alrighty then. So, let's go down here. What we're going to do first is we're going to use our Shape Absorb on it, which I don't actually have one right now. But what you'll do is whack a Shape Absorb on it. And what's cool about red maps is you almost get an automatic block from a lot of these things. Because when you put the Shape on, on 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 here, look at its natural neighbors. Um, normally this would be a tier 9. And this is a tier 7 and a tier 8. So we sort of get that effect of a shape absorb, but reversed. Um, and what you'll notice about this is tier 11, um, there's no map that's higher than it. So we don't actually have to block stuff with a shape absorb using the red map strategy. However, the downside of this is you'll notice there's a lot more maps below it. So you've got tier 11 and then you've got tier 10, 9 and so on and so forth. So you have a higher um, kind of map pool that the Atlas can choose from. Um, and that's why it's harder to sustain red maps. But in general, all you need to do is make sure you don't have any tier 11s on the Atlas uh, and you don't have to worry about the natural connectors in this one because none of them are really eligible to drop uh, at a relevant level. Um, so you just have to take off all the tier 11 maps. Um, however, you can have some issues running in um, tier 11 maps and sustaining them infinitely just because of the massive drop chance of all the maps before it. So what you can do is called um, running between tiers. So this basically means instead of just having a tier 11 um, map, you will also run a tier 12 map, which basically allows you to go ping pong, ping pong between the tiers, giving you more leeway. So whenever a tier 12 map drops, um, you can go up a tier and then that'll give you a better chance of dropping the tier 11 maps than just being in a tier 11 map. If you kind of understand what I mean. Oh, that's a Twitch follower. So you can kind of go back and forth between tiers. That'll increase your chance to sustain. So what you do is you do, you pick a tier 11 and a tier 12. You take off all the red tier 11 and 12s, and then you'd go backwards and forwards between those. So that's how you kind of go infinite. Hopefully you guys understand how to go infinite now. And next video, I really want to talk about um, how to kind of juice up your maps and roll them and choose what um, things to use based on the economy. Because a lot of people have trouble thinking, oh, is it worth it to use that Valorb? Do I use chisels? Do I even use Alks? They're so expensive. And I'm going to teach you guys how to kind of identify which ones to use when and when it's most profitable and on which maps. One more thing I want to point out um, is when you have two higher natural connectors, that can kind of make you have a little bit of an issue with your map sustain. So here in Infested Valley, we have one higher natural connector and we can easily block that off with a shape absorb if we choose to, which is what we did here. But you only get two shape absorbs for tier 13, 14 and 15, meaning if you wanted to do a tier six map, um, let's pick one here, uh, Underground C, which is the one I've been doing. Um, you'll notice ooh, that is really difficult to see. It's so unfortunate. Let's pick... Uh, oh, we'll just do Underground C. Oh, sorry for the, uh, the the crap everywhere, guys. Let's say we wanted to do Underground C. The natural connectors for Underground C are the following. Uh, underground River, which is the Tier 7, which is a higher connector. And Ramparts, which is also a Tier 7, which is a higher connector. So these connectors are going to really, really make it difficult to sustain if you can't get rid of them. So again, we only have one Tier 12 Shape Absorb, uh, which means we can only block out one of them from dropping from our Tier 7 map pool. So what you can do here is use the Elder Orb. The Elder Orb turns any map on the Atlas into a Tier 16 map, which again will allow that map to no longer be eligible to drop. Um, I don't have the Elder Orb, but if I did have it, what you can do then is create a, an instance on Underground Sea where you don't have any higher tier maps like we did with Infested Valley. Because we've got two higher connectors here, you'd block out both, one with the Tier 12 Orb and one with the Elder Orb, allowing you to have that same setup you had on Infested Valley, and it'll be really easy to go infinite because, again, you'll have your Tier 6 map and then you have no Tier 7, so those will become Tier 6. Tier 5 maps become Tier 6, and then you'll have tons of the map that you want dropping because that's the only one you have unlocked. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video on how to go infinite on pretty much any map you want. Uh, you can't go infinite on these, and you can kind of use a little, that little trick to go infinite on red maps, although you should be pretty much fine all the way up to Tier 13 or 14 to go infinite on one of them, as long as you guys have as long as you guys have the patience um, to wait for RNG to be on your side, and um, that should be pretty great for you guys. I've seen a lot of people sustaining tier 14s and 15s even sometimes, shaped of course, um, and I've heard a few myths about people sustaining 16s, but I'm not too sure about that one. So you guys try it out, tell me what you guys think. Um, if you guys have any questions, drop them in uh, the description, obviously. 
they'll be in the next uh, video coming up so I can answer those questions there um, at the beginning and uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video and it's helped you guys out at least a little bit um, and that's going to be the introduction to this big guide for the atlas and making your own strategy so hopefully you guys have enjoyed this again uh, I'll see you guys in the next one cheers <laughs>